Every web designer on planet Earth is excited to get to the portion of the project where they get to choose typography and colors and do interesting layout and animations. Before you get there, and I hate to be the one to say this, but you have a lot of content planning, organization, site structure, and helping to improve the website's navigation and maybe, just maybe, even planning for the SEO that's going to help drive the site forward. I wish there was a process somewhere out there that could help us to plan for all of this content and site SEO and organization and structure. Oh, that's right. It's called a sitemap. A sitemap is exactly what it sounds like. It is a map of your website from a 10,000 foot view. The things that it's mapping out are things like site structure, the organization, the navigation, the content that's gonna go on each one of those pages and the blocks that that content lives in, as well as things like SEO. And this 10,000 foot view map is gonna help us to get buy-in from stakeholders and from clients before we get to all that high fidelity design. I'm inside of a FigJam file right now, a blank FigJam file, and this sitemap could be as simple as dragging out a couple of notes here. Now that's quite a bit of work because it just took us that long and all we've done is actually get the names of the pages there. And so yes, this is one way you could do it, but it is a lot of work. Another way that you can do it is to use Figma's new AI features. You could come up here and try to generate some sort of sitemap. This, we could paste in a prompt for our site. In this case, I just said a sitemap for an education website. The website's called 30 Day UI Designer. It features a powerful 30 day course about UI design. The homepage showcases the features of the course as well as pricing, testimonials, and sign up call to action. And the, that's right, the sub pages include a UI design blog, free lessons, and a free resource page. And we can go ahead and click generate and Figma is going to pursue a bunch of possibilities for us. Now, this is great because now we have AI doing a little bit of work, but I will say that this is still not the greatest thing that I've ever seen, right? This really just looks like a bunch of sticky notes. This looks like rough ideas, and this isn't necessarily something that I want to have to present to my clients. Now, while those are decent solutions, I think there's a much better solution out there and it's a great online tool called octopus.do. You can jump over to it and you can start working on it for free. What's really cool is not only can you do all this manually and build all these pages, but you can also use their new AI and it does way better. So I put that same prompt in here. I'm gonna press generate and I'm gonna let Octopus do what it does. All right, Octopus Do has finished doing what it's supposed to do, which is laying out this sitemap. I'm gonna tell you, it's done way more than I asked it to do, which is really, really great for me. Not only did it lay out my homepage and my second tier navigation, like my blog, my free lessons, my contact page, but it also thought of some important pages that I wasn't even thinking about, like terms and conditions or my privacy policy. So that's super convenient. Very, very thankful for that, that it mixed those in here. But the AI was also super smart. I said, hey, I want a blog. It gave me some examples to show to my client or stakeholders the types of articles that you might find. And since I fed the prompt that it was a UI design website, then all of a sudden my blog posts become about fundamentals, design principles, user experience, color theory. So it's kind of actually giving me some blog ideas, some content ideas that are gonna go in there as well. That's the same thing for my free lessons. It's given me examples of lessons to see that all of these lessons and more, all the other lessons that will come, live under these this one page of free lessons. So this is a interior page and these are sub pages of this one here. See how we're starting to map out the structure and the planning. But on top of that, we also see the content blocks that might live inside. So we're gonna have some sort of header right here, a footer, and our lessons are gonna move down the page. Same thing here with our home. We have header and footer, and those are shared elements throughout all of our sitemap. And, but we also have each of the sections. Now, if we don't like these sections or we want to move them around, we can just drag and drop and move those around. But what's also great is each one of these sections, we can actually add some visual description to what that section may look like in wireframe format. We can also add content and SEO here. So let's start with adding some visual representation. You can see our header has kind of what looks like a logo here and a bunch of nav items. Great, that's exactly what that might look like. Uh, but we can also click on our hero section and tap wireframes. And then we can say, hey, what do we want that hero section to look like? 
maybe it's going to look like some sort of really large slider. And now we get that visual wireframe representation. Now, this is not a perfect design diagram. We're not actually wireframing. We're just letting the user or our stakeholder or clients know, hey, this is the type of content that might go there. And that's very, very helpful from a planning and structure kind of standpoint. Okay, so let's move into features with wireframes there. Maybe we want to do some sort of card setting or article setting. That looks kind of cool. Pricing. I know we have some pricing cards down below. We'll just cruise down and grab pricing cards. When we're looking at this, we can actually talk our clients through this. Okay. A hero section, we're featuring some images or a feature section or pricing or testimonials. And people might say, oh, what testimonials are we using? Well, then we get to actually click on our little button at the top right of each of our content blocks that opens up our content section. This is where we can, with a rich text editor, say, you know, a testimonial from Gary V and, you know, and he said these things, okay? And then we have another one. This one is from Jennifer and she said a bunch of stuff here. So we can actually input our content and save it. And you can see that information right there. Our users, our clients, stakeholders can come back in here, leave comments on this. They can edit this, but they can always reference it. So you see how we come back to testimonials. Our content is there. Now we're treating this as some sort of content approval platform. We don't have to go anywhere else. We actually don't need to go to a Google Doc or a Notion document or a Figma document yet. We can keep all of it right here to do all of that structure and planning. Now we can take any of these if we really like them. Let's say we have that testimonial piece here, right? We can actually click on that. And there's some other options as well. We can assign this to somebody. Hey, we need you to write that content. We can add a block underneath. We can complete this. We can actually upload an image to it, um, which if we have some sort of wireframe, we could do that. We could change the color. So maybe we want to change that to be like red. That's testimonials. And we can actually turn it into a symbol or a component. And then guess what? We can come down here and we can actually drag that component into other pages. Now that we have this sitemap, we might have some comments that have to do with, you know, the entire project as a whole, not individual page stuff. I can come up here to the top and open up some project notes, and this is where I can start adding some global notes, right, on how the website might function, how it all might tie together, maybe some things we need to do, just notes that have to happen here. But I can also come over to my little plus symbol up above there and I can actually bring in a sticky note or an external link. So I could bring a sticky note in, I could place it right here. And in that sticky note, I might write some thoughts and those thoughts might not have to do with an individual block, but with the page as a whole. And also look inside the top left corner of each of those and we can see the different tags that might take place here. So now we're getting into SEO. We get to see the title, maybe the meta description, the slug, and maybe we have an open graph image. Again, all of this is about planning and structure and preparation, and you get to do all of this in one place before you go out to some other platform. Mixing and matching platforms with clients can get really, really tiresome. Stakeholders don't wanna have to go to lots of different places. So having something in your process and workflow that really combines a lot of the needs of your standard website project can be very, very helpful. Now, when the time comes that you want to actually share this, all I got to do is head up to share and I get a link. I can make that read or write access and that anybody with the link, just like in Figma or another design tool, we can password protect it and we can send this out or invite people by email. And that would allow them to come in here, leave comments, work on the content and start to plan out the structure of your website. Now, if you need a little bit of help getting started, Octopus actually offers some really great templates from design agencies, landing pages, SaaS websites, and even things like a payment card application, because this can be used not only for websites, but also mobile and desktop software. So it's a really great thing to do to just grab one of these clonables, check out what's being done there, and you can immediately start using this template in your account. It's free to sign up and it's incredibly useful in any web designer's workflow. I highly recommend octopus.do. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments and check the description down below for a link to octopus.do as well as a bunch of other helpful links that might help you as a UI or web designer. I hope you're having an amazing week, designing amazing things, making amazing things, and planning and structuring. We'll see you in the next one.